Hey, well, welcome to the channel. It's uh, it's Wednesday, and I had some people email me last night, wanted me to check out a guest house over here on the other side of uh, Changpu at Gate. So I figured today would be a good day to do it, and uh, we're gonna walk around a little bit. And I'm gonna tell you a story that just really kind of freaked me out. It's it's something that uh, happened just uh, just a few weeks ago, and. Uh, Kind of shocked me. I uh, <laughs> was not expecting, uh, not expecting something like this to happen to a friend of mine, and and it did. And uh, man, it seems like lately that a lot of my friends are getting split up or divorced or splitting up from their girlfriends and and moving on. And and uh, but this guy's had some really bad luck, and uh, I'll tell you his story uh, on the way over there. And we're going to walk through Changpu at Gate, and I'm going to show you some of the things that they're doing over there. Um, they found, found, you know, the gate fell down, or, or it, part of it did anyway, and they started digging it up, and they found the old artifacts where the gate used to be. So they're digging it up, so I'm going to show you that as well. Now down here, like I said, we're right directly across from Changpu at Gate. Right down here, walk across the street so you can see it. And this is mainly for the people who come down here. Where you see that first street, I'm gonna put, try to put my finger on it right there. If you turn right there, there's some really good places to eat. There's a place called Cheese Tober, where they make really good cheese steak sandwiches. And then there's a couple places across the street that, to eat. And um, it's, it's really, really good food. And also down here, there's some really good places to eat as well. So we'll walk on this way and we're going to cross over the road and get to Changpuak. And I'll show you what they're doing there as far as the ex excavation is. But there's some really good places to eat that will pass on the way there too as well, so you know. Trusty guard there. I usually park over there when I come down here. Lex Doctor is right behind me. But anyway, to my story that I'm going to tell. I've got a friend, and he's, he's been a friend of mine for probably 10 years, a really good, good friend. And I'm good friends with his girlfriend as well. I met them both at the same time. And uh, really nice people. Uh, I just, uh, you know, kind of people, you know, you, you kind of like to be around. Well, he lived here, they lived here in Chiang Mai, and uh, after a while, they, they, uh, they wanted to, to get a house or build a house somewhere, and uh, she, uh, she had some land not far from Wuhan. Uh, it's basically farmland that her family owned. So they moved down there and, uh, and built a house. And uh, I know uh, I know they fi he financed it because I told him how to get the financing on it um, through uh, SCB Bank. But anyway, they're down there and they're living there and having a good time. The, the house got finished and. Uh, They were, uh, you know, pretty happy from what I what I understood. And they came up here a couple times, and, uh, and I met with them, and things were going good. And you know, just like I said, he, both really, really decent people. And he is the type of guy that would just about give you the shirt off his back. Very, very. Uh, um, just very generous and very caring about, about people, other people. So, you know, I, I don't know. I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna be a judge here. I'm just gonna tell you the story and, and let you all judge it whichever way you want to. But uh, about a month ago, he decides to go traveling. He goes over to Vietnam. And, you know, he's, he's been around the pike a lot. He's, 
he's been actually been in, in uh, Southeast Asia a lot longer than I have. He's pretty, pretty savvy and smart. So, you know, I didn't really reckon he would uh, have any problems or anything. But he gets over to Vietnam and he's having a great time and, you know, he's sending pictures back and, and making videos and stuff and, and uh, the different stuff over in Vietnam. And uh, so anyway, he comes back to, to Thailand and uh, I messaged him on Facebook a couple times. We're talking back and forth. And, uh, Smoke weed, did, look at that. 20% off. Please join us, second floor, smoke weed daily, 1 p.m. to 11 p.m. <laughs> That's crazy. Pimp space, interesting. Golly. It never ceases to amaze me. There's my uh, funny guy over there that I always see. looks like a real person every time I go by. We're gonna cross the street here, but anyway, one day I'm sitting there and playing on Facebook and I get a message from him. And uh, he says, uh, my girlfriend and I are splitting up. And it was shocked me, you know, because they've been together for a long time and I know he's got, he's got a lot of money invested in that, the house that he, they built. And it just, it was just a shocker for me. Uh, and I said, okay, I, I, and I you know, is everything okay? He says, yeah, everything's okay. It's just, we've, uh, we've kind of decided to go our separate ways. Neither one of us are, you know, are real happy. And uh, so I said, well, you know, that's, that does happen. And right over here is a place called Northgate Jazz Co-op. And they have, they have uh, jazz music there at, at night, and I think it's mainly on the weekends. But you, there's usually a crowd out there, and they're out for, towards the street. But anyway, long story short, you know, I told them, I said, well, you know, I said, you both are my friends, and, and I'll stay friendly with both of y'all. You know, I said, I'm not going to, you know, just because you, you all are splitting up, I'm not going to, you know... Uh, you know, he's actually my friend. But I said, you know, I'll, I'll be friendly to her as well. And he thanked me and he said, yeah, you know, it's, it's you know, it's, we're, we're okay. And, and uh, we're getting along fine. And, and uh, I'm going to stay here for a while. And I said, okay. All right, this is what they're doing here. I'm going to change, stop the story here for a minute. And, uh. What had happened was the gates collapsed over there and, and the wall kind of fell in and they started to rebuild them. And then they realized, they started digging, they found all these, you know, the old artifacts where the wall used to be. And so they're, they're digging it up. And uh, supposedly, they're gonna try to recreate it how it was back when they, uh, when it was first built. And there's a lot of stuff that they've recovered in here while they were digging this out. See, the road actually went right over the top of this. So they, they built the road right over the, uh, the old wall. And you see the remnants of it right here. Pretty interesting. But anyway, we're gonna walk here and then we're gonna walk down that way because the guest house that we're looking at over there. But anyway, you know, all, all's fine and dandy with him. You know, he's, he's talking to me and he, I said, what are you going to do? He says, well, you know, I really want to go back to, I want to travel and I want to go back to Vietnam. And uh, I said, okay, you know, I, I've been to Vietnam quite a few times and it's, it's kind of interesting. It's a nice place to go. But... Uh, I said, you know, are you okay? And yeah, oh, I'm fine. You know, everything's going fine. I just, I'm trying to make my plans and, you know, get things squared away. So, uh, 
you know, I can, I can go over there and stay for a while. And he said, I may, you know, travel into Malaysia or, you know, go different places. I said, that, yeah, that's cool. So about two or three weeks go by and, and uh, he emails me or sends me a message. And he said, I'm leaving next week. I said, okay, you know, and, and uh, I said, everything cool? He, yeah, he said, everything's cool. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go there and, you know, check it out. And if I don't like it over there, I'll go someplace else. And, you know, I may even end up back here in, 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 uh, in Thailand at some point. Which, you know, hey, great place to be. All right, I think we're going to use a crosswalk here because I'd have to go down. Well, no, I'll go down that way. I think there's another crosswalk over there because I want to be on the other side. Because I have to make a left over here. But anyway, so a couple weeks go by and I get a message from him. He's in Bangkok. Now, he had to take the bus from, from Ho Hin to, to catch his flight from Bangkok to take him to Vietnam. Well, and this is where it, it gets, it gets kind of crazy. He gets, to, he, he booked his, his, his plane online and he gets to the airport with his bags and uh, gets up to the ticket counter, getting ready to board his flight. They spelt his name wrong on the tickets that he had, you know, or the, the tickets they had issued, and his passport was different. And those of you who have flown before know that, I mean, everything's got to be dot your I's and cross your T's, and everything's got to be correct to get on an airplane here, believe it or not. They wouldn't let him board. So... The plane was taken off. There was really nothing he could do. So what he did was he he had enough money on him. He took a taxi into Bangkok and went to a hotel, checked into a hotel. And what he was going to do is try to straighten it out online to get uh, get his ticket money back and, and get another flight out. Well, when he gets online, he finds out he can't. There's nothing he can do. He he can't he can't change it. He can't can't get a refund or anything so he uses his debit card to try to buy another ticket you know knowing he's he's got oodles of money in the bank they declined his card he couldn't make the purchase so he gets to check in and his girlfriend had cleaned him out just absolutely wore him out. Uh, he didn't have a drop of money in the bank. Nothing. And he only had a small amount of money with him. And uh, he was really between a rock and a hard spot. So he ends up calling somebody in the States and uh, wires him some money. And the next day he gets a flight out. And <laughs> he... Uh, He gets to uh, Vietnam, and they've lost his luggage. He, he only, he didn't think he had two or three pieces of luggage with him. They lost it all. So he's there, he, he, he doesn't, uh, doesn't have anything to wear, and uh, he checks into his, his hotel, and he had to pay cash for his hotel because his credit cards and debit cards weren't working, you know, because he didn't have any money. And uh, it was just crazy, and he finally got halfway sorted out. Now this is Little Guest House. This is the one that they were talking about they're gonna stay at. And they asked me to walk around here, so I think I'll walk straight because that's just kind of an alleyway here and see where it comes out. This is a nice little place here. And it's right down from Changpua Gate. Now Changpua Gate will have a lot of food at night. And uh, but yeah, it looks kind of nice. Let's see what it says. Elephant Sanctuary, National Park, you can do everything. Transfer 200 baht to Pai, 800 to Bangkok, huh? Drinking water, 10 baht, Just about, that's about right. Yeah, it looks nice. Anyway, we'll walk down this way and see what's down here. But uh, 
finally his his uh, his luggage reached him and uh, he was planning on living on the money that was in his bank account back here in Thailand and he he, he couldn't do it I mean they just cleaned him out she cleaned him out I don't know exactly how much it was but based on I, and I don't want to ask you know I just uh, it, it was quite a bit uh, I'd say it was probably five or six thousand dollars but you know it, it is what it is and I would never have suspected that from from uh, her number first thing of all I would have never expected them to split up and that's that's the thing that was really odd for me because they were just the perfect couple I mean just really really nice people um, you know, like I said, he'd give you the shirt off his back. There's a mosque right here. I've been on the other side of it, but I've never been in the front of it. It's beautiful. And here's another little place to eat right here. I don't know what's up that way. Hmm. I think we'll walk this way. That comes out on 107. And up on the right, and there's a lot of places out there too. This is really cool. Changpok Moss, Chiang Mai, Thailand. Huh, we're gonna walk up this way. Wadi Kap. Oh, chicken. <laughs> yeah. Let's see where this goes anyway. It may just dead end back here. But, uh, I, like I said, I, I never would have suspected it, that ever happening to him, but it did. And uh, it was funny, but I have another friend that had split up from his girlfriend as well. And uh, I asked, I told him, I said, you know, hey, I just had a buddy that just got, he just got wired out. And uh, I said, I hope you've protected yourself. And he hadn't. He went back and he, he went into his bank account and changed his password just to be on the safe side. But, uh, you know, you just, gosh, you just never know. You know, and the thing, you know, here's my thing. You really, you know, you want a relationship to work and you want to trust and you want to, uh, You know, you, you don't want to go into a relationship thinking that it's not going to be good or it's going to be bad or anything and, you know, take drastic measures like, you know, uh, prenuptial agreements or things like that or, you know, doing your bank accounts separately or whatever. Well, that's pretty neat. That is a cool house right there. All right, we're going to think we're going to proceed this way. But, uh, it just goes to show that you never know. I mean, uh, you never know what's going to happen. You never know what people are going to do. Um, and we're going to have a live stream Saturday night. And, and Spencer and I and Charlie, you know, we're going to talk about relationships and cross-cultural relationships. And, uh, and just have a different opinion, you know, di different opinions of how you make it work and you know, the things that you have to have to understand when you're in a relationship with somebody that's of a different culture. Uh, it's totally different. Um, you know, and, and, and different people have different, different issues. Uh, my friend, you know, I, I really admire him for the things that he did. I mean, he, he lived down and, and basically he, he was in a village. He was not near a city. He was probably the only American within 50 miles. That, you know, he didn't have any American friends down there where he was staying. Uh, if he wanted to eat food, it would be, uh, you know, it would definitely be Thai food. He had to travel pretty good distance to uh, get any kind of, um, you know, foreigner food. So. You know, he, I've always said that, you know, I, I, I could never live in the village. I'd, I'd never try it. Uh, I've talked to people that, who have. I, 
talked to a German guy one time that lived in Lex Village. And he was like talking to it. He'd lived there for years and years and years. And he was like talking to a zombie. Um, you know, he'd just been in, been outside of, you know, society for so long that uh, he changed quite a bit. But, you know, I, I would never try it. I think we'll walk out here and I'll try to get up this road. Walk out and see where it goes. This is a neat little area. You can walk around here and get lost, for sure. I love being out like this, getting my exercise. Everybody's laundry is there hanging. Yeah, we'll walk out this way and see where it goes. Who knows? Probably take me right back out on 107. But, uh, you know, if you're looking for a relationship, that's, that's fine. And, you know, my feelings are, and, and I'm going to do a video about this as well, that, you know, when you get into a relationship with a person that relies on you for your in, for income, relies on you for the bread that goes on the table, you've got a moral responsibility to take care of that person. And I know my friend. I mean, I just know him. I, I, He's, he's not one to, uh, you know, to uh, leave somebody in a, in a bad position. I haven't asked, and I'm not going to ask. I did ask if he mind if I told his story, and he said no, he didn't mind. So, uh, yeah, but I didn't, I didn't, didn't dig into it. Uh, but I would just suspect that uh, he. Uh, did the right thing. Anna Coffee Holla Kitchen. Huh. Okay, we just went around this way. All right, let's walk out front here. Yeah, there's a lot of places. Yeah, there's photo bug right there. Now, if you all come here and you want to explore a little bit and you're a little bit uh, brave, right on the other side of the, you'll see that, see that little white bridge right there. Now, right on the other side of that bridge is a little walkway, and you go to, to one of my videos. As a matter of fact, it's, it's the one that's on the top. It's, it's my preview video where I do a walkthrough over there. It's, uh, it's kind of interesting. The people live in It's like a little village back there. And nothing to be worried about. The people are real friendly. They're real nice. Uh, but you might just want to take a walk through there. And then straight up there, there are plenty of places to eat up there. If you go to the left, you're, uh, there's a few markets over there and, and just different places. Now I'm going to see if I can get across the street here without getting run over. I love coming up here. But, uh, you know, it just, you have, to, you, have to, you have to be reasonable. And you have to understand that this is a different, these people are different, different it's a different culture. Um, totally different. And you have to, uh, you have to understand that. Huh. It is hala food. That's pretty cool. And there is a market back here too that I walked through a few times, and I wonder if it's here, maybe right here. No, I don't know where this goes. Huh. Have no idea. Coffee right across the street, green tea. But that's my story for today. And, uh, you know, like I said, I'm not going to judge her uh, because there's, there's a lot I don't know. And uh, I know that uh, he was in a real bad spot. Um, you know, it, it just, 
it's just sad. But you know, you have to you have to protect yourself, and you have to expect the unexpected. And I'm sure that he didn't expect that to happen. Yeah. Oh, it was loud. Yeah, the market's right here. Yeah, it's shut down right now. Get your charcoal, eggs, jackets, all kinds of good stuff here. But yeah, you know, it's especially if you have a younger girlfriend or a younger wife. And I'm going to do, like I said, I'm going to do a video on that because I have some strong feelings about that and you know now that I've, I've I'm kind of looking at life in a different perspective you know it's uh, things are a little bit, bit different you're gonna have to look at things a little differently hello I was selling jewelry and coffee and that is some kind of cookies. Hello, a room coffee. But at night, this place will be packed with people cooking. You cannot go. I'm okay. I got my car right over here. You can, well, how much do you charge to go to Deutsche Tep if somebody wants? Oh, okay. Hmm. There's his prices. I'm by myself. I, I, I'm just asking. I have a YouTube channel. I have some people coming that are going to stay right around the corner. Maybe they'll hire you. Where are you go? Today, tomorrow? I live in Hangdong. All right, we're going to cross the street here. There we go. Always crossing the street. Make sure you look to make sure they're going to stop because a lot of times they don't. And they won't wait for the, uh, the light to turn green before they take off. And that probably says a fine for, you, for dumping or something. I don't know. <laughs> I'll have to ask Lick. But the, uh, the water's real high in the moat. And it's coming off the mountains. And you can see the mountains in the, in the distance. The clouds are all in there. Pretty good. Well, listen, I'm going to head back to the car, and uh, I appreciate everybody that's come in and left comments and bought Super Thanks, bought coffee and, and stuff like that. I really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, my goal is to get the, the channel built, up, built back up to, you know, the, the numbers that it was getting before I got sick. And, uh, you know, actually, I, I don't really feel like I got sick. I just had a little stumbling block there. I feel great. Uh, I've got a lot of energy, and uh, you know, it's just—it's one of the things that happen in life. And you know, maybe I'll do a video about that too. But uh, anyway, I'm going to see you later. Bye bye.